Step number nine is where we brainstorm the change ideas or change concepts or in other words, your possible solutions. And this is a great stage during your quality improvement project because many of your team members will come with lots of ideas on how they think they can solve the problem. So what you do is look at each secondary driver in your driver diagram and the team brainstorms all researchers from the literature specific change ideas to address that particular secondary driver. So you need to think about what exactly are you going to do next week or next month and, and also how exactly are you going to go about it. And you place the change ideas in the driver diagram and draw the arrows from right to left from the change idea to the relationship of the secondary driver. So getting back to our example of David, one of his secondary drivers is that he's going to sit less at his work desk. But how is he actually going to do this? What is the change idea that he'd like to test? What he's going to do is move to an adjustable standing desk and stand for at least two hours a day. Another secondary driver is that he's going to reduce the volume of food eaten. But how is he actually going to do this? And he came up, he and his team came up with a couple of ideas. First of all, that he's going to serve his meals on a small side plate, which will help to reduce the volume of food eaten. Another concept that the team are thinking about is gastric banding surgery. So what you do is you look at each of the secondary drivers and come up with change concepts by looking at the literature, brainstorming with a team and putting those into the driver diagram, then drawing in the relationship arrows. And this is where it's interesting because several of your change concepts might address one, two or three of the secondary drivers. So a driver diagram reads like a story. You have actions on the right and the effect or the impact on the left. So if David serves his meals on a small side plate, he will reduce the volume of food eaten which will decrease his calorie intake. So hopefully within 12 months, he will lose 40 kilos. Another story is that if he gets a personal trainer and goes to the gym at least twice a week, he'll go to the gym more, which will help him to increase his exercise and burn more calories. So hopefully within 12 months, he will lose 40 kilos. So step number 10 is where you assess the priority of your change ideas. So when you look at your driver diagram, you've got many change ideas and you need to work out which ones you'll test or implement first as a priority. So the, there's two stages of this. You look at the ease of implementation as the first stage and work out whether it's going to be easy or hard to implement. So in other words, will it cost a lot of money or can it be done next week? Or will it take hours, weeks or months to embed? And, and will many people have to be retrained or educated? The next step is to look at the impact on the aim and review each secondary driver to decide whether it's going to have high or low impact on the aim statement. So how much will the change idea affect the problem or the aim statement or the measures, the outcome measures? So with David, the change ideas that have a high impact and are easy to implement are the things that he should test as a high priority using Pandu Study Act cycle. So the way we work this out is we look at each of the secondary drivers and the change concepts and work out their priority. So with David, one of the change concepts he's going to trial is move to adjustable standing desk and stand for at least two hours a day. And the impact here, we thought it would have high impact on him losing weight. This is a bit of a gray area, but we thought it would have high impact. Implementation, just a hint, he does have adjustable standing desk at his workplace. So that we felt would be easy for him to do because he has those work desks at his workplace. So that's something we'd test early on in a plan do study act cycle. Next change idea is David serving his meals on a small side plate and halving the volume of food. The impact on him losing weight, we felt that would have high impact on him losing weight and implementation. We felt that would be easy to do because everyone has small side plates, but sticking to it would be quite a hard concept, but we actually think to implement it would be quite easy. So again, that is something that Dave would test early on in a plan to study act cycle. Now gastric banding, impact on him losing weight, we felt that would have high impact on losing weight, but implementation, this is actually something that's quite hard to do and quite risky, and it's not something you'd rush into early on. So that's something you wouldn't test early on a plan to study act cycle. You do think about later on if all else failed. Also, if there are any change ideas that have a relationship to two or more secondary drivers, they're also things that you should think about maybe doing as a priority plan to study act cycle. So what you do is rate 
all of your change concepts with this high or low impact or easy or hard to do and work out which ones you do early on in a plan, do, study, act cycle. It's your turn again now. So look at your driver diagram, cheat sheet at steps 10 and 11. So at step 10, you need to look at each secondary driver and brainstorm any change ideas or interventions. What we mean here is possible solutions that you want to test. And then draw in the relationship arrows from that particular change concept to the secondary drivers that it relates to. And also at this stage, see if there's any more balancing measures that you might think are relevant. And step 11 is to assess the priority of all the change ideas. So look at each change idea and look at working out whether it's high or low impact on the aims and easy or hard to do. And also look at any change ideas that impact two or more secondary drivers and consider whether they might be something you might want to do early on in a plan, do, study, act cycle. Step number 11 is about plan, do, study, act cycles or PDSA cycles. And this is a link to an excellent video by Robert Lloyd from the IHI in America. You should consider watching. A PDSA cycle is just a, like a small trial or a small pilot. You don't really want to go and roll some of your interventions or your change ideas out in a big way initially because you need to test these to make sure that there aren't any side effects. So a plan to study act cycle, the way you use it is you choose one priority change idea at a time. You plan your change and you think about what are you going to change, who's going to do it, when and where will it be done, and what kind of data will you use? So how can you measure that, there, that a change is an improvement? So that's the planning stage. The do is where you carry out the change and you observe and you measure. The study is looking at that data and the anecdotes and the act is working out what are you going to do next. Getting back to David's driver diagram, what we're going to do is we're going to test one of his change ideas and this is about how he gets to work through the week because it's high impact and easy to do. And also there are two relationship arrows to the second rivers. So week one and two, what David's going to do, the plan is that he's going to walk to work on Monday, Wednesday and Friday and he's going to catch the train home in the evening. He's going to basically ease himself into a new exercise regime. He's not going to go in hard and fast and try and do marathons in the first week. The data that he's going to collect is his kilometres travelled to work, exercise goals met, the calories burned, his weight and his BMI. And a balancing measure, he might want to measure how often he's late to work or how often the weather impacts him not being able to do this exercise regime. The do is where he's going to carry out the plan and collect the information in, an, in a tally sheet. The study is every Sunday he's going to review the past ex exercises from that week to see if his goals were achieved. And the act, after he's looked at the data, he's going to work out whether he can actually go and ramp this up the following week or will he stay the same or does he need to wind things back because he's not achieving his goals. So if all went well in week one and two, in week three and four, what he's going to do, he's going to ramp things up a bit. He's going to walk to work five mornings a week. He's going to collect the same data and the same balancing measures. The do is the same where he's going to carry out this plan. The study is the same as the week before where he's going to look at on a Sunday night to see how he went and ACT is just reviewing whether he's going to ramp things up in the following weeks. So all going well, he in week five and six, he's going to walk to work five mornings a week, but he's also going to break out into little jogs. So this is again ramping up his exercise regime, making things a bit harder. And the plan do study ACT is very and week seven and eight, what he's going to do is on Tuesday and Thursday, he's going to ride his bike to and from work and he's going to walk to work the other days. So what we're really demonstrating here is a PDSA cycle ramp, where from week to week, we're making the intervention harder and harder and we're testing things as we go along. A tip here from the IHI is to think big but test small. So the PDSA cycle is a fantastic way of learning, you know, what is working well, what doesn't work, what should we keep, what should we change, or what should we throw out, and what new knowledge we need to plan the next test. So I think staff are much more willing to test the change if you say we're going to do some small pilots or small trials rather than going out too hard, too fast. So a PDSA is basically a trial or a pilot. 
And some advice from the IHI about PDSA is that most successful improvement projects are those that get into the testing of the PDSA the quickest. So get into this rapid cycle of testing as early as you can. What you can do with your PDSA cycles is start several at the same time or you could stagger them. So with David, for example, he could do several PDSAs all at the same time, like how he gets to and from work is one change concept. Another change concept might be reducing his volume of food eaten, so eating on a side plate. And another change concept you might want to test early on is using a low calorie diet. How you can manage your information from your PDSA cycles is through a little report like this, which is in the driver diagram starter kit. So you might want to prioritize your PDSAs and allocate them to staff, work out the measures that you're going to use to see that it changes an improvement and report in from meeting to meeting. So it's just an optional tool that you could use. This is another video from the IHI from Robert Lloyd, which will give you more information about PDSA cycles. Now it's your turn. So what I'd like you to do is in your team, decide the first priority change concept that you'll test via a PDSA, plan how you test it using the PDSA cycle and document the PDSA steps on some butcher's paper. So what you need to do here is work out what are you going to change, who's going to do it, when and where it will be done and what kind of measures will you use and think about process and balancing measures here. So hopefully the outcome for David is that he'll go from looking like this to looking like the David that we know in Florence. So in summary, a driver diagram, it's just a very simple tool. It has the whole concept of the project on one page. You can use these clever hyperlinks through to your Excel spreadsheets to show your measurement. And you really don't want to get hung up on the detail too much because it's just a very practical tool to help you improve. A couple of reminders here, just make sure that you don't put the solution in the aim statement. The aim statement's got to be about the problem and definitely your primary and secondary drivers will start to hint at change concepts or possible solutions. But importantly, don't put a solution in your aim statement.